Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and I want to give you an update video on the Doriani Fista Inquisitor uh, Shield Charge and Doriani Touch character. So for the most part, as you can see here, uh, I am clearing with Shield Charge, and that is paired with Impulsor and Herald of Ice. Now, you don't really need Herald of Ice in this setup. It is largely Impulsor, or if you don't um, actually want to use the Impulsor, Herald of Ice does help clear up uh, with our Shield Charge plenty too. And then you can see I see single target is Doriani's Fist or Doriani's Touch, the skill coming from Doriani's Fist, and it's just a big slow sort of ice crash type skill. You can see the clear on several um, of the better maps in the game like a channel, waterways, that sort of thing, is very smooth and probably one of the fastest characters I've played uh, in recent times, although it definitely does lack a bit against um, some other maps that do have bigger obstacles and uh, gaps and things you can't really shield charge over. As a pure shield charge build it takes some getting used to and it is somewhat uncomfortable uh, around corners, obstacles, all that sort of shit as you can see right there. But for the most part it is a very nice clearing uh, character and does work pretty well in that regard. So as a fairly general mapping character at this stage I think he's done pretty well and is fairly worth playing. It isn't the cheapest thing in the world to make since you do have to have a uh, Rigvold's uh, Talisman, which you know enables you to do crit, though I'm not necessarily sure crit is the only option for this build. And of course, I used a Lyc Lycosidae, which is you know a good few exalts. Once again, not entirely sure you have to have a Lycosidae, but by God, does it make things a lot easier to not have to worry about uh, accuracy for the entire build. And you can see that, yeah, with the large packs and um, mapping and all that it is pretty successful and it does clear fairly fast i did get through to level 89 so far so i'll still be playing it for another level or two 89 so far in about 20 hours i think 18 to 20 hours which is the fastest character i've done so far this league by a fairly decent margin but the single target is somewhat lacking when it comes across uh the really big heavy hitters and it's not that the damage isn't there it's just that it's kind of slow and kind of unreliable getting the right crits on uh having your attack speed not be all there without the full buffs of your totem and vile haste and frenzies and blood rage and all of that so Unless you're completely fully buffed, it does feel a little awkward at times against the harder bosses. Though you can see in most cases, the uh, tier, let's say, 5 to 15 bosses don't really put up much of a fight. They get, for the you know, largest part, completely one-shot and steamrolled. And then, uh, you know, you can have a little example here against these portals. When you do get the crits right, when you do have time to get the DPS in, then uh, it does hit fairly hard. And there are some good examples um, of me hitting really Really hard with this but I do fear it's going to struggle when we get to uh, tier 16 and shaper in particular so for everything up till that I've been okay with my single target may have been a bit lacking at times here or there but it has definitely been okay enough and you can see that in the uh, normal at Siri here sometimes you get some of the comically large crits uh, on the lower content especially and just delete things from the game that's definitely amusing but it won't really happen uh, in the later stages of the game since your damage does eventually tail off compared to the health of those monsters and then since they uh, survive so long it makes actually killing them a lot harder because the strength of the character is in a one-shotting shit and then moving on and its theory as you can tell has a 1% uh, reflect damage so I tried to just shield charge her into oblivion there a bit because uh, you'll see what happens when I go fully ham with some Doriani's Fist right here and uh, yeah that 1% reflect hurts quite a lot when you're hitting for like 300,000 with your main attack. So normal at Siri, you know, it's a bit of a joke nowadays, but it is fun to see things get rather one shot. I did manage to do a couple of elders, didn't proc them on the red tier at all. So these are yellow tier, uh, tier 9 to 10 though, so level 77 or 78 or something. Still respectable enough. Uh, the damage is nothing too amazing, but we can easily take care of this level of content. If you compare it to my previous character, the Blade Flurry dude, it's got something like a fifth of that single target, which is, you know premier just ridiculous single target and then bosses like this that dive around a lot move around a lot are fairly awkward for this character because it takes a while for you to get your slam off and uh, it just gets a bit weird 
when they constantly dodge and you can't really get your damage in and the sustain feels a little weird on your life um, with the leech that I currently have, the defenses I currently have. They're not terrible, but they're really not that amazing when you have to lock yourself down for so long to get your attack off. So it does get me in trouble sometimes, but um, you know, for, I think for everything up till tier 16, it will be totally fine. It's just kind of hard to expect a Duriani's Fister to really truly be good for tier 16s. And shit, I wasn't expecting anything out of this character, to be honest. I just thought it'd be a bit of a meme, a bit of fun, but it turned out to be a really nice clear speed uh, monster and had a little bit of respectable single target, mostly still just a meme and kind of just fun. If you've got nothing else um, planned, then Doriani's Fist doesn't have to be Inquisitor, but in this case was an Inquisitor. Went down fairly smooth, and if I happen to do some successful tier 16 runs in the next couple days, I will definitely share those with you as well. But this was just a demo of some of the clear speed and a little bit of the single target up until tier 11, 12 maps. And uh, for all intents and purposes, I will show you what the character looks like as it is built right now. So at this stage of the character, it is level 89, still called Inappropriate Fisting, a Inquisitor. Um, you can see 100% chance to hit, that is thanks to the Lycosidae, and I have something like 50 crit on my uh, main skill, 60 crit, and then Power Charges, Assassin's Mark, and Diamond Flask, means that my crit should be fairly reliable uh, for the most part. Um, no weapon whatsoever, because we're running with Dora and his fist, that's where we get most of our damage from. A uh, bunch of lightning, two unarmed, and that's scaled off of um, tree damage, so elemental damage across the tree, elemental damage with attacks, and some crit, and some claw crit, and claw crit over there, thanks to our Rigwald's Talisman. So that's the basis of the build, and I am using Impulsor just for the explosions, which I not too sure is even the right move anymore, think, um, thanks to Herald of Ice. I feel like that does a good enough job to help clear with the shield charge, but it does look really cool and Impulses is still a fairly new effect, so I think it's fun to play around with. Now, besides um, this and the six link and that, there's not really anything terribly special about my gear. Uh, I went ahead and bought just a few rings that have uh, lightning damage and lightning damage to attacks, and then filled out some resists. Couldn't really afford to do opals because, um, well, it's just really hard to get resists and life on opals while also maintaining the damage. So I just bought these rings for something like 40 chaos each. Um, Star Conjure with a shield charge enchant for something like uh, 40 chaos again. Uh, my usual belt I use which has life elemental damage reduced flask charges. And then the boots I'm reusing from a previous character um, that I managed to slam the movement speed on. So they went from, you know, pretty much worthless boots to a good maybe exalt or two thanks to that movement speed which factors in fairly nicely for shield charge. Um, the jewel I'm running here is life attack speed and then a bit of cold damage. So I figured life is probably the best thing on our um, jewel there. Some attack speed if you want, some damage to um, lightning, cold, whatever, uh, goes a long way as well. And then you may notice here that my mana is quite largely unreserved and that's because the skill costs a lot of mana. Um, even with my humble setup of using Ellie damage to attacks, conk effect, uh, crit strikes and ruthless. Now ruthless and crit strikes both costing a fairly low amount of mana, 110 and 115. We're still at 57 mana cost and that's with this as well, tireless. So once you're actually fully up and running with protector, with blood rage, with your vile haste and your silver flask, you attack pretty goddamn fast and you oom yourself fairly quickly, um, even with the leech we get over here. So that's something to bear in mind for your mana costs, that they're going to be tough if you don't have the right setup, if you don't have enough mana, um, if you don't have the leech, if you don't uh, really focus on what you're doing with your mana. So I only thought I could justify um, Herald of Ice. Sometimes I feel like I could definitely run Blasphemy um, Assassin's Mark, and I have that um, lined up over here. So a lot of the time I am running Assassin's Mark and Blasphemy as well for clear speed because um, for clear speed and just for maps I don't really need much more than a few fists on a hard target so that's not at all a problem. When I get down to uh, some serious bossing and um, eldering and stuff like that I sub in Blasphemy with Curse on hit 
and it's attached to my Orb of Storms. So Orb of Storms itself is um, getting the Assassin's Mark procced. And as well as that, I use Orb of Storms purely to trigger Instruments of Virtue. Uh, when I've cast a spell recently, 50 attack damage. So I try and use that every four seconds or so. And um, if you have the curse on hit, then it's also your Assassin's Mark at the same time too. Um, besides that, you could maybe try and get a Herald of Thunder or a Wrath. I personally didn't have any int on any of my gear and wasn't willing to re-gear anymore, so I couldn't really get a high level Wrath or Herald of Thunder. It's 150 int and uh, that's just not going to happen. But a Wrath is another like 20% damage to our build. If you can fit that in somehow, by all means do so. I couldn't without any of the int. Um, other than that, Blood Rage over here. Lightning Golem up here and Protector just for some extra attack speed. Boots have Immortal Call, Increased Duration, Casting Damage Taken, and Vile Haste. And the main Shield Charge setup I was running with is Shield Charge, Fortify, early damage with attacks, increased area, crit strikes, and faster attacks. Uh, if I only had a 5 link, I'd probably be dropping increased area or crit strikes. Or if you're really ballsy, you could drop Fortify. Um, otherwise, I think the rest are just too nice. Uh, it's kind of a tough choice though, and like I said, not even sure Impulse is the right move. If you wore a Belly of the Beast instead, you'd be sitting pretty at 6k life fairly easily, and that might be just a lot better for the character overall. Now, we do get a lot of crit multi from our jewels at this stage, so over here we're looking at crit multi, life attack speed. Um, some crit multi, life attack speed, crit multi, crit multi, crit multi, and multi attack speed, lightning damage, reduced mana cost. And uh, I'm really not sure what I could do with the passive tree at this point. I don't really like these nodes, but I'm fairly tied to this int over here. And uh, otherwise, I would probably want to get rid of this as well. I'd go down here and grab this life instead, and then maybe go down here, grab this attack speed, and grab this multi, or finish off the wheel over here for a clause of the magpie. Um, so the passive tree isn't entirely too concrete. You can play around with it and maybe make something better. I will mention though that for leveling this character, I used Face Breakers uh, right from level 16, Mega Nord's Belt, some Elrion Jewelry with physical damage on it, Amulet with physical damage on it. That is really easy um, to level with. Just use Shield Charge, Ancestral Protector, and I personally went with Ice Crash up until level 62 or 63 for the Fist, um, simply because I wanted to uh, simulate the Fist. Uh, the way the skill would work, because Ice Crash is very similar in that regard. So I leveled with Face Breaker. Make sure you get some flat fizz if you do that, and uh, that's how you're going to simulate the character in the long run. That's all I've really got to say for the character for now. Um, yeah, that's about it. If I have happened to um, come across Tier 16s and Shaper and all that, and it doesn't go completely terribly, I'll upload that. I'm not very hopeful. I think it'll probably suck ass against those. But if it goes well enough, I'll uh, make a quick video of that and uh, show you what's going on there. For now, though, that's probably all I've got. That's basically the build guide. It's been pretty fun, and it is um, very nice for shield charge. Maybe crit's not the right move. Maybe it is. Maybe um, Durani's fist isn't the right move, and just face breaker crit shield charge is going to be a lot better. That's something I may revisit in the future as well. Though, that's it though for this one guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and the wrap up. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.